until I saw it. Something crawling on the glass that filled me with great concern. Oh no! Wild Pharaoh Ant Scouts were checking out this new island of ours. It didn't seem they could get across just yet. This is not good. We can't have what happened to our Titans and our Jawbreakers happen to our new Polyrakis Ants. It was only a matter of time before these scouts will go back to their main colony and let them all know of our lush island. The time has come, AC family, for the release of some special guardians. We needed to add a colony of beasts into the waters of Eldragon to protect our island inhabitants. And I knew the perfect creatures for the job. Enjoy. It was clear that Eldragon was in the initial stages of a mass invasion by these notorious wild ants known as feral ants. Ants we've been grappling with for months now. They still haven't moved out of my ant room. And of course, they would find our ant island here alluring. For on it, they could inhabit its rich virgin soils, receive a constant supply of insects and honey, and all the water and humidity they needed. Not to mention a stout fledging polyrachis colony with brood to nourish them for at least a week or two. Eldragon needed some guardian beasts to intercept the pharaoh ants' plans of invasion and protect our Polyrachis colony. AC family, I will take you through the official release of these beasts into Eldragon, but trust me, you will want to keep on watching until the end for the crazy and unexpected event. As for our Polyrachis colony, they're clearly oblivious to the amount of danger they're in. They just seem completely happy to be moved into their new home in this leaf pocket on Eldragon. Speaking of which, the time has come, AC family, to give these new Polyrachis ants an official name. Please take a moment to vote here for your favorite name from my top five favorite suggestions from the comments of last week's video. Thank you for your input, AC Council. This beginning acclimation period for an ant colony is often the most exciting and challenging stage for any ant keeper because in these first few weeks, we get to learn via trial and error what the ants want and don't want. I found that one can read all the ant keeping manuals in the world, but in reality, every ant colony is different and has its own personality. These polyrachis ants, I find, are inquisitive, but at times quite cheeky. I saw this worker wandering, so I attempted to figure out what it was looking for. I wanted nothing more than to give it whatever it needed in order to help the colony succeed. I tried offering a fresh piece of superworm, and... Okay. Rejected. And it assumed a threat pose. Alright, Polyrakisan. Perhaps some honey might tickle your fancy? Success. She began licking the drop, and... Oh. I guess sugar wasn't what she was looking for either. There was something else on her mind. What could she be looking for? I suddenly found her seemingly trying to pick at something from the driftwood. And as I looked closer, I realized what she might be looking for. She wasn't looking for food. She needed building supplies. As you may have seen in our video a couple weeks ago, these ants build homes in leaves using the silk spun by their larvae. They glue leaf ends and debris together to create these cozy nests. I tried offering the worker a piece of sphagnum moss and a tiny bit of cotton. Bingo! She instantly took to it. She picked up the sphagnum moss bit, but I guess that piece didn't meet her standards. She inspected my offering a bit more. It was amazing to be able to interact with her like this. Would she approve of my package of building materials? And no. And here she is assuming a threat pose again, warning me not to come near her. Alright, I get the message. So instead of choosing for the ants, I figured I would give the ants the opportunity to choose their building material at their own discretion. I tore up more sphagnum moss and cotton bits and placed them into a small container, which I placed onto Eldragon Island. And as planned, in a few short hours, the workers were rummaging through our container, picking ideal pieces to bring back for nest building. It was awesome to see them at work. What an amazing and unique behavior to witness in ants. Right, AC family? It was like watching birds building a nest, seeking out and gathering nesting medium. And 
Wow! Check out their nest progress! It seems like they've got a plan, and they're already looking pretty cozy and insulated in there. In the meantime, back to grave matters. We needed to unleash guardians into these waters. Just in case the pharaoh ants decide to pull stunts and attempt to get across this river somehow. By the way, this river also needs a name. Please take another moment to vote among these top 5 name suggestions here so we can give this river an official name. So now AC family, let's go over our short list of candidates to be the protective water beasts of El Dragon. Turtles, Archerfish, Crayfish, Frogs, Salamanders, House Geckos, Newts, Beta Fighting Fish, White Cloud Minnows, and Mosquito Rasboras. Many of these were popular suggestions from last week's video. Now to narrow the list down, I had to pass each species candidate through three specific criteria. 1. Ideal habitat match. 2. A taste for feral ants but not polyrachis ants. And 3. Compatibility with shrimp. So let's go over our first criteria. Ideal habitat match. Which of these species could realistically and comfortably live in this Eldragon paludarium? Right off the bat, turtles would be eliminated because there is simply not enough space. Perhaps a baby turtle might be able to live in here, but it wouldn't be long before it outgrew it. And not to mention, a turtle would totally wreck this setup, and God forbid it bend a branch or plant enough to touch a wall and form a bridge for the feral ants to cross, or our polyrachis ants to escape. This also eliminates one of the top suggestions from last week, archerfish. The water of El Dragon is only about 8 gallons in volume, and super shallow, which is insufficient space for an archerfish. Plus, it would also try eating our polyrachis. Our second criteria, a taste for feral ants, but not polyrachis. We don't want our water beasts to be picking off our polyrachis islanders. This eliminates a lot of our candidates. Frog salamanders and crayfish would eat both feral ants and polyrachis ants that fall in or get too close to the water. A house gecko, though it would make a cool gargoyle hunting feral ants crawling on the glass walls, would also relish any polyrachis ant. It leaves us with four more candidates. Newts, beta fighting fish, white cloud minnows, and mosquito rasboras. So our final criteria was compatibility with shrimp. We didn't want our water beasts to be feeding on our shrimp colony, which by the way, also need a name. AC Council, vote here. And get this, surprisingly, the shrimps have already begun breeding. So cool. See this baby here? That shrimplet is super cute, so we can't have it become food for our new river additions. Let's see who passes the test. Newts sadly don't make this cut, seeing as they relish aquatic crustaceans like shrimp. Betta fighting fish, though gorgeous fish and a very popular suggestion in the comments of last week, also don't make this cut because the betas are large enough to eat the shrimplets and semi-adult shrimp. Two more candidates left, white cloud minnows and mosquito rasboras both very small fish that swim in schools. Turns out, white cloud minnows, which grow up to 2 inches, are twice as large as mosquito rasboras, which grow no larger than 1 inch long. So not only does that mean white cloud minnows can actually feed on the tiniest shrimplets, but also that I couldn't keep as many white cloud minnows in our river. So, it was official, AC family. Our new water beasts were going to be a school of mosquito rasboras. Mosquito rasboras, known scientifically as Boraras brigittae, are found in dimly lit, slow-moving quiet streams and ponds in the forest peat swamps of West Borneo. This was perfect because the rivers of El Dragon Island offered a lot of shady areas, mossy areas, calm areas, and a stream. They also loved eating living mosquito larvae, which in my books was a plus. In this size of paludarium, I could comfortably house an impressive school of 10 mosquito rasboras which was awesome. I couldn't wait to do it. But before I could add our mosquito raspora fish into this river, there was something I needed to do first. The waters were not prepared to house a school of fish just yet. We first needed to move in a special preparatory team. Remember last week how I said that it was essential that our river was biologically established with enough beneficial bacteria to properly sustain life? Well, right now, the bacterial colonies are still building up and are doing okay at keeping our shrimp healthy, but I fear there may not be enough beneficial bacteria to sustain a school of fish. Let me explain. So without getting too in-depth with the biochemistry of it all, basically all animals excrete waste in the water, right? Excrement, urine, etc. 
This waste releases ammonia into the water, which is toxic to fish and aquatic creatures. Now here's where the bacteria work comes in. AC family, get this. A group of bacteria convert the ammonia to nitrite, which is even more toxic than ammonia. But another team of bacteria consume this nitrite and convert it to nitrate, which is a lot safer to fish than ammonia and nitrite. Periodic partial water changes help remove the buildup of this nitrate before it gets to dangerous levels. So, we needed to make sure we had enough of this beneficial bacteria to neutralize the amount of waste produced by a school of 10 mosquito rasboras. Otherwise, adding the fish would poison Eldragon's waters and kill all its inhabitants. So, to gather this dream team of bacteria, I had to dig into my larger tank's filtration system and borrow some of the medium. Beneficial bacteria live mostly in the substrate, on decor, and in the filter of aquariums. The sands and plants I used for Eldragon's rivers were all transplanted from my larger biologically established tank, so I knew I had a lot of beneficial bacteria in Eldragon waters already, but I wanted to add more just to be on the safe side. So here before us is Eldragon's filter. A simple submersible filter with canisters holding the medium to house the bacteria. So here I had our canister with propagated filter medium from my larger tank, just packed with all that awesome bacteria. And in the other canister, I wanted to add this cool stuff called Biosphere, containing rock biological media for filters with bacteria already added to it. I popped in a few of these babies inside and voila! One final thing I had to do was wrap this entire thing in more media, just to make sure any shrimplets don't get sucked in. Now that the shrimps are breeding, and now we were ready to reinstall our filter. A new planet of beneficial bacteria just waiting to eat up and neutralize our fish waste. I placed the filter in, and in a thick gross brown cloud, the gunk from inside our filter blew all around the rivers of Eldragon. Though our water now looked polluted and dirty, don't be fooled, this is good dirt. Our populations of bacteria were now being transported by the currents to all areas of our river. The gunk covered the sandy floors, embedded themselves into the rock crevices, attached to plants, and nourished our moss. The shrimp were having a field day at all this gunky goodness, picking away and eating anything it found tasty. The rivers of El Dragon were now seeded with this life-sustaining team of beneficial microbiota, which would be the biological welcoming party to our new water beasts. The next day, the waters were super clear. The bacteria were now settled, and we were ready to add our fish. But suddenly, a movement in the water caught my eye. Is that what I thought it was? Oh no! Feral ants in the water! I tried to fish one out, and indeed, it was a living feral ant. It was confirmed. The feral ant workers were now attempting to swim across. This was bad. We needed to release our guardians now. AC family, behold our great water beasts. Okay, so they're small. Very small. But to feral ants, they were huge sharks. Look at them. I couldn't wait to add them in. Let's do this, AC family. I poured the fish in. And as I stepped back to watch them explore their new home, it was as if suddenly, time stood still. Watching them was actually quite beautiful. At first the fish were a bit scattered and disoriented. They were suddenly in a strange place they'd never seen before. But it wasn't long before they all found each other and their instincts kicked right in and they began to school. In a group, together they began to explore Eldragon's river waters. At first they got a feel for the fast currents, and then eventually made their way towards the peaceful gully, and checked things out around the corner where our mosses were. I was suddenly a bit worried about how they'd get along with our shrimp, but no, the shrimp and the fish seemed to acknowledge each other's presence, but not bother each other. This was just amazing, AC family. Over the next few hours, 
I watched as the fish began to gradually come into their own and navigate Eldragon's waters much more confidently. They played in the waters, riding the exhilarating river currents, then moving to slower waters, only to decide they wanted to swim in the fast waters again. Back and forth, the fish swam happily and started to pick at little specks of stuff the currents carried downstream. It was amazing to watch our Mosquito Raspora school acting as they would in the wild. But now the question was, would these fish be efficient at eating feral ants trying to swim across? Only time would tell. And I promised myself I would keep an eye open to film the moment if I was ever lucky enough to catch it. But based on the condition of the water surface just one day after adding the fish, it seemed our mosquito rasboras were super thorough at feeding on whatever came floating on the surface of the water. Look at how clear. All right, let's give our new school of mosquito rasboras a name, shall we? Leave your name suggestions in the comments and I will choose my top five picks for us to vote on in a future video. AC family, as I watched our new water beasts, now a bit more colorful, play and feed, I felt assured that our feral ant invaders no longer stood a chance at setting foot on Eldragon. Our Polyrachis ants could rely on these fish to keep them safe. I went to check the Polyrachis nest progress. <gasps> oh no! AC family, looking into the nest now, it was completely empty. The Polyrachis ants were all gone. What happened? And shortly after their disappearance, Something absolutely mind-boggling happened that left me speechless. What is this? Oh boy, AC family, so many questions. And trust me, you won't want to miss the answers in next week's episode. So be sure to hit that subscribe button now so you can keep following this epic ant story. And also, don't forget to hit like every single time, including now. By the way, AC family, in case you were wondering about when I will update you on the other ant colonies on this channel, rest assured, I will be featuring them soon. I generally try to share these epic ant stories in trilogies before moving on to the next ant colony. And indeed, some exciting news is coming up. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch some really awesome and special footage of our Polyrachis ants nest building. And just a hint, there's something else there that you might find cool. Also, I would like to quickly plug my daily vlogging channel. That's vlogs uploaded every single day, in case you may be wondering what I do in between these weekly ant videos. Thank you to all AC family who have already subscribed. All right, and now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what did we observe in the Polyrachis ants that was previously largely unknown to biologists? Congratulations to Omega Rex, who correctly answered feeding ecology. Congratulations, Omega Rex, you just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, how do beneficial bacteria help keep fish alive in an aquarium? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love Forever.